Hi guys, so um, I'm getting a lot of questions on uh, safety gear, so I thought I'd uh, get back to the series and uh, do a quick video on safety gear. Alright, so this is the, I'm going to go through what you need for uh, Australian Lemon series. Um, it's a little bit different for other events you might be running in. For example, we're running in the Nolly Grand Prix series in Queensland, which have different rules. But let's just go through the lemon stuff. Now, so this is my helmet. Uh, it's a, a Vero brand, but that's not really important. Uh, what they're going to look for at lemons is that it meets the appropriate standards. So the appropriate standards recommended for lemons is Australian Standard 1698. Um, and you'll find that either on a label on the back of the helmet or you'll find it uh, printed inside the helmet. You can see, if, I don't know if you can see in there, but there's a, a, a uh, label right in the back there that specifies the standard. So you can see mine's been through a couple of Lemons events and they'll, they'll check it and put a sticker on it. So 1698 or the other uh, uh, standard you're looking for is the uh, Snell standard, which on this one is SA2015 and there's a new one out, which I think there's EA2017. I can't remember the new standard, but this is um, the helmet. Now, you don't have to go to the uh, uh, this particular brand. The reason I went for this particular brand is I run a head uh, a neck restraint system, which is why I have this helmet. Uh, neck restraint systems are not mandatory, but they're recommended. Um, I had an accident at Lakeside the other week, and this uh, probably really saved me getting some whiplash. So I run a hands type of device. Um, not mandatory, but certainly recommended. So that's uh, the helmet and neck restraint system. Um, the next thing you're going to need is... a suit. Uh, this is my Alpine Stars suit and the minimum requirement as stated in the Lemons rule is, is dual layer. So uh, this is a dual layer suit. Uh, a lot of the cheap eBay ones are only single layer so just keep an eye out for that. Um, again I think in Lemons it says uh, they just have to be uh, of appropriate standard but again you'll find this is on the back of my collar uh, where the standards are in the year of manufacture, a lot of places will only take them for a, a certain uh, uh, certain years. So that's my uh, race suit. Now, when we first showed up at Lemons the first time, uh, we got into a, a bit of strife because uh, one of the uh, rules it says is uh, fireproof undergarment, so you can't wear anything that's flammable. So um, when you're refueling the car or or and underneath the helmet, you'll need one of these things, a balaclava. So uh, that's a fireproof balaclava. Uh, mine's an OMP brand. Uh, again, you'll find the FIA standards printed on it somewhere as well. Then if you get down to your feet, you'll need um, some fireproof shoes. I actually have uh, you know, driving shoes, but as long as they're fireproof, they're okay in lemons. Um, one thing you also need is some uh, fireproof socks. There's uh, fireproof socks again. Mine are OMP brand, I think. No, they're Sparco. So um, you need a pair of those and a pair of gloves. Don't necessarily have to be fancy driving gloves like these, but they need to be you know, fireproof type of gloves. Now all this stuff can uh, really add up. Um, so, um, for example, my setup here, uh, my helmet, and my uh, hands device that goes with it. Um, I managed to get this on sale in a, a motor racing shop in uh, Adelaide, actually. Um, but that would normally be, and this is only bottom end of the market, it would normally be around about $1,200. I managed to get those for about $900. Um, of course, if you don't have the head and, head and neck restraint system, it becomes a whole lot cheaper. Actually, I'll, get, I'll show you what I used to wear. I used to have this helmet. Um, as you can see, it has no head and post for the head and neck restraints. Still has the sticker on the back for the 1698 standard, so that's perfectly good in lemons. And I picked that up, I think it was around, it might have even been like $200. It was uh, insanely cheap, so I'll just keep that as a spare. So you don't have to go to the same expense I've got here. You could go to uh, something a little bit cheaper. Um, but where things really start to uh, uh, start add up is when you get into this stuff. 
So race suits, uh, a dual layer race suit will actually be quite expensive. Um, this particular one here, I mean, uh, you don't have to go to Alpine Stars and all that sort of stuff, but this one here I picked up in the UK quite cheap, but it was still well over a thousand dollars. So uh, you can often see them on eBay. I saw a Jules uh, uh, suit come up just this week, actually for four hundred dollars second hand. So that's a, a, another good source of doing it. And um, balaclava and socks, you'll probably want to budget $60 each for uh, um, some good fireproof ones of those. Um, shoes, no need to go to this sort of expense, but uh, for me, these were $300. And then a, a set of gloves was about 80 bucks as well. So this stuff can really add up. Like here, <laughs> this is nearly uh, you know close enough to uh, two and a half grand worth of investment just in the safety gear. Um, I'm of the opinion that you can never have too much safety gear, so I'm happy to spend that sort of money on safety. Um, but uh, that's what you'll require, but you can do it cheaper if you look around for secondhand stuff. Speak to people that have done limited races before, they might have secondhand stuff they're getting rid of. I know within my team now, in fact, we've got a few drivers that are no longer doing it, so they're renting out their suits and letting other people borrow them, that sort of thing. But something to keep in mind, you need good safety gear and that can add up. <laughs> Hope it helps and I'll uh, see you next time.